Genshin Impact is a wondrous game with an ever-growing world and stylish art design is able to capture the imagination of players. Whether you enjoy the world, story or gameplay, one aspect that will keep players coming back to the game are the amazing characters. So I'm Darkblade with a character guide to Albedo in Genshin Impact. In this guide we will briefly cover the basic lore of the character, their moves and abilities, weapon options, stat priorities and artifact builds. Remember though that these guides are aimed at free to play and low spender players, so the guides will feature the characters as if they were constellation level 0 with mainly 4 star weaponry. There may be a few exceptions to this, but if that is the case they will be pointed out. Albedo is a 5 star Geo character who wields a sword, but in order to obtain him you have to wish for him via the gacha system on limited banners. Albedo, also known as the Crider Prince, is the chief alchemist and captain of the investigation team of the Knights of Avonius. A genius and master of alchemy, he was able to introduce the craft to Bonstadt, proving its value and usefulness. Thanks to recommendations from his peers such as Alice, he and his assistant Sucrose have goals of learning as much as they can about the world of Tavat by studying almost anything they come across. But should you meet Albedo, you may find his disposition a little bit cold he tends to shy away from social interactions, mostly keeping to himself and his research. And thus, Albedo normally keeps to himself in remote regions around Mondstadt, such as Dragonspine. But there is an explanation to this, as Albedo is a synthetic human. He was created by an alchemist, Rheindotter, a famous alchemist from Canria. The birthmark on his neck also indicates that he was created through alchemy and not traditional methods. But despite his origins, he is committed to his position within the Knights of Favonius, showing the world that alchemy is useful. Whilst at the same time, the bonds he is forming with his fellow knights, he's able to come out of his shell and show a little bit more emotion. Albedo is also a skilled painter as well, and in some respect could be putting his emotions into parchment that way. But regardless, Albedo is a very interesting character, however there is a dark side to him, as he is linked to Durin, a black dragon and another one of Rheindotter's creations. And this link, whilst on the surface may seem benign, other characters such as Dainsleaf and Venti can see the threat that Albedo poses to Mondstadt. Now every character in Genshin Impact has access to various talents, which are divided into combat and passive talents. Combat talents are obviously your moves and abilities that you use in a fight, whilst passive talents are mechanics that work in the background of a character. When it comes to Albedo, his first combat talent is his normal attacks, otherwise known as the Favonius Bladework Vice. Pressing the attack button will allow Albedo to perform a combo with 5 rapid strikes. Alternatively, you can hold down the attack button to perform a charged attack which will unleash two rapid sword strikes knocking opponents back. However, this will consume a small amount of stamina. And his final normal attack is a plunging attack, which is performed by pressing the attack button whilst mid-air, which will cause Albedo to plummet towards the ground, damaging opponents in an AoE around him. But Albedo's next combat talent is the Abiogenesis Solar Isotoma. This is Albedo's elemental skill. When performed, Albedo will create a Solar Isotoma using alchemy. This is in the form of a metal looking flower, which upon its creation will deal AoE geo damage to all opponents around it. After its creation, the solar isotoma will remain on the field and gain the following properties. First of all, there will be a field indicated around the isotoma, indicating the effects. Now, when an opponent within this field takes damage, the solar isotoma will generate a transient blossom, which will deal AoE geo damage. This damage dealt scales off of Albedo's defense as well. This transient blossom effect explosion can only be generated once every two seconds. So how this elemental skill works in terms of dealing damage is, first of all, you'll place down the isotoma, the flower on the floor, creating this solar isotoma field. Afterwards, every time you damage opponents that are within the field, you'll create a transient blossom, which is basically an AoE geo-damage explosion that scales off of Albedo's defense. And the damage can come from any source, it doesn't have to be from Albedo himself. So after placing down the Isotoma, you can swap Albedo off the field, bring on another character, and the transient blossom AoE geo damage will still occur so long as you're attacking opponents within the Solar Isotoma's field. This can be great for when it comes to dealing AoE geo damage to opponents, and on top of that, it's a great way to create and gain crystallized shields. But the Solar Isotoma has a few other traits as well. First of all, at the center of the Solar Isotoma field, there'll be a Locus 
which is basically the centre of the flower. When a character stands on this, the solar isotoma will accumulate geopower in the form of a crystallised platform that will lift the character up into the air. This gives you a vantage point, which is definitely useful when it comes to certain characters, such as characters who use bows or catalysts. However, only one of these crystallized platforms can exist at any one time. Additionally, the solar isotoma is also considered a geoconstruct, which can be useful when it comes to traversing the world, activating certain puzzles, or when using albedo in unison with other characters. Finally, if you hold down the elemental skill, you can actually choose where to place the solar isotoma if you so wish. But it's on such a quick cooldown, which is one of its major pros, that you can normally just place it down quickly in another position if your original position wasn't good enough. Anyway, let's move on to the next combat talent, which is Rite of Progenitor, Tectonic Tide, which is Albedo's elemental burst. When performed, Albedo will command Geo Crystals to surge and burst forth in front of him, dealing AoE Geo damage. This is quite a hard-hitting elemental burst in its own right, but it has a secondary function. If a solar isotoma, so his elemental skill, created by Albedo himself is on the field, when you activate his elemental burst, seven fatal blossoms will be generated in the solar isotoma field, bursting into bloom and dealing AoE Geo damage. So, so long as you use his elemental burst whilst his elemental skill is activated, his elemental burst will deal its first initial hit and then follow up with seven additional hits afterwards. Remember, these are all AoE damage as well. But this damage is separate from the transient blossom damage generated by your solar isotoma and will not occur. Nonetheless, this is a strong elemental burst. Just remember to use it whilst you have your elemental skill on the field. But those are all the combat talents available to Albedo. Let's move on to his passive talents. First of all is Calcite Might. This allows the transient blossoms generated by your Abiogenesis Solar Isotome to deal 25% more damage to opponents whose HP is below 50%. So the explosions from your elemental skill will deal more damage the weaker your opponents are. The next passive talent is Homuncular Nature. Using the right of Progenitor Tectonic Tide, so your Elemental Burst, will increase the Elemental Mastery of all nearby party members by 125 for 10 seconds. So this is a good way for Albedo to buff up his party by increasing their Elemental Mastery after using his Elemental Burst. This can also dictate the rotation that you use Elemental Bursts, as you'll probably want the homuncular nature to activate so your elemental based characters gain that elemental mastery buff to allow them to deal more damage through their elemental reactions. And then the final passive talent is Flash of Genius. When you use Albedo to craft weapon ascension materials, he has a 10% chance to receive double the product. So he can be useful when it comes to leveling up weapons in the game. So those are all the combat and passive talents available to Albedo. Let's quickly talk about the constellations, although to be honest, Albedo doesn't really have a ton of must-have constellations. And remember, these guides are supposed to be aimed at constellation level zero characters. But if you're lucky enough to get any constellations for Albedo, there are two that stand out. First of all is the opening of Phanerozoic. Basically, the transient blossom AoE explosions generated within your solar isotoma grant Albedo a buff known as Fatal Reckoning, to which it stacks up to four times. As you gain stacks, should you unleash your elemental burst, the Tectonic Tide, this will consume the stacks of Fatal Reckoning and enhance the damage of your elemental burst by 30% of Albedo's defense. So it helps increase the damage of your elemental burst. The other constellation worth considering is constellation level 6, Dust of Purification. This allows all active party members within their solar isotomas field, who are protected by a shield created via crystallization, to have their damage increased by 17%. Some nice constellations there, but they're not essential to Albedo in all honesty, and he is one of the characters who functions perfectly fine at constellation level 0. So let's move on to the next part of the video where we talk about the different builds that I like to use for Albedo. Now when it comes to Albedo, he's more of a sub DPS and support character more than a main DPS. Also he has no healing capabilities so he cannot fulfill that role. His moves and abilities steer towards the role of a sub DPS more than anything. With certain artifacts he can be built to be a bit more of a support, but most of the time with Albedo you'll be switching him in into a battle for a few seconds using your elemental skill or elemental burst and then switching him out and this is reflected in the builds I like to use for him. 
So the first build is the sub DPS build. This build is all about dealing maximum damage we can with Albedo, even if he's not the active character on the field. So when it comes to the weaponry, you have three options I'd recommend for Albedo here. First of all, you'll want to go for the Cinnabar Spindle, if you're able to get it. This was a free to play weapon, which was available during Shadows amidst Snowstorm's event. This is a nice looking sword that gives us a strong defense percentage, which definitely benefits Albedo's moves and abilities, especially his elemental skill. And on top of that, you also get the Spotless Heart, which allows elemental skill damage to be increased by up to 80% of your actual defense. And as Albedo is all about defense, this greatly increases his overall damage. This effect will be triggered no more than once every 1.5 seconds though, and will be cleared after 0.1 seconds after the elemental skill deals damage. Another weapon would be the Festering Desire if you were able to get it when it was available during its event, which gives us a decent energy recharge percentage, and on top of that it gives us the Undying Admiration, which increases elemental skill damage by 32%, and elemental skill critical rate by 12% as well. Finally though, if you don't have either of those two weapons, then the Harbinger of Dawn, a freestyle weapon, is by far one of the best weapons for Albedo. Whilst the base damage isn't so hot, it gives us crit damage and on top of that when our HP is above 90%, it will give us an increase to our crit rate by 28% as well at max refinement. The reason this works so well on Albedo is that he doesn't rely too much on base attack when compared to some of the other characters in the game and because he is off the field most of the time you can always normally ensure that he has his HP above 90% giving him that increase to his crit rate. But moving away from the weapons to talk about the artifacts. Now the main artifact set you'll want for this build with Albedo is the Husk of Opulent Dreams. You want four pieces of this artifact set. The fifth can be down to whatever you wish to make up for stats that you're missing. Now for wearing two pieces of the Husk of Opulent Dreams, you'll get a defense increase of 30%. Again, this works nicely into Albedo's skills and abilities. And for wearing four pieces, a character equipped with this set will obtain the Curiosity effect. When the character is on the field, the character will gain one stack after hitting an opponent with a Geo attack which can be triggered a maximum of once every 0.3 seconds. Alternatively, when the character is off the field, the character can gain one stack of this curiosity every three seconds. This curiosity can stack up to four times and with each stack, it provides you 6% defense and 6% geo damage to that character. When seconds pass without gaining a curiosity stack, then you'll lose one stack of curiosity until they're all gone. So this set works wonderfully with Albedo. Not only does it provide that bonus defense, but thanks to the curiosity bonus and the way Albedo works with him being both on field and off field, you should easily be able to maintain those curiosity stacks, granting us even more defense, adding to Albedo's overall damage. But before we move on to the final details of the stats, quick note that if you haven't been able to get the Husk of Opulent Dreams yet, you can also use two pieces of the Archaic Petra, which will increase our Geo damage by 15%, combined with two pieces of the Noblesse Oblige set, which will increase our Elemental Burst damage by 20%. But Husk of Opulent Dreams is the primary set you'll want to be going for with Albedo. But anyway, let's move on to talk about the stats. So first of all, when it comes to the sands, you'll primarily want to go for either defense percentage or you can go for energy recharge. Defense will increase our overall damage whilst energy recharge will increase the speed at which we can use our elemental bursts. When it comes to your goblet, you want to go for geo damage bonus. Although if you can't get a geo damage goblet, you can always go for defense, but geo damage is generally better here. And then finally on your circlet, you'll either want to go for defense, crit rate or crit damage. As for the substats, defense is king, especially defense percentage, then flat defense, then crit rate, crit damage, and finally energy recharge. As for the talent priority order, you want to focus first on the Abiogenesis Solar Isotoma, which is your elemental skill, followed by the Rite of Progenitor Tectonic Tide, which is your elemental burst, and then your normal attacks. And with that, you'll have a build that is incredibly strong and can deal a lot of damage, even though Albedo won't be on the field for that long. Just remember to always have your elemental skill, the Isotoma, down on the field so Albedo can contribute to a fight regardless of who your active character is. But that brings us on to the next build which I like to use for Albedo, which to be honest is a little bit of a niche build and personally it does pale in comparison to the sub DPS build we just talked about. But nonetheless, some of you out there may find it an interesting way to play as this is more of a support build for Albedo. 
So for this support build, when it comes to the weaponry, much like the first build, they are pretty much the same. You want to either use the Cinnabar Spindle or Festering Desire, or failing that you can go for the Harbinger of Dawn. When it comes to the artifacts though, we're going to be using four pieces of the Archaic Petra set. The Archaic Petra set for wearing two pieces will grant us a 50% Geo Damage bonus, but for wearing four pieces, it gives us a support function with Albedo. Basically, when we obtain an elemental shard created through the crystallized reaction, all party members gain a 35% damage increase for that particular element for 10 seconds. Only one form of this elemental damage bonus can be gained in this matter at any one time. But there is a caveat here. Albedo, the person who is wearing the Archaic Petra set, has to be the one to pick up the crystallized shard. If not, the buff will not be passed to your allies. So, hypothetically, say we are using a party that involves Diluc. He hits an opponent with one of his pyro elements. You then bring Albedo onto the field, plant down his elemental skill, which in turn hit the opponent primed with pyro with geo damage, which will create a shard. After which, use Albedo to pick up that shard before switching back to Diluc, who will gain a 35% damage bonus to his pyro attacks for 10 seconds. So it can make things very interesting when it comes to the playstyle with Albedo, as well as different rotations you can create to deal large amounts of burst damage. But as for the stats with the support build, when it comes to the sands, you'll primarily want to go for defense, or failing that you can go for energy recharge. When it comes to your goblet, you want to go for geo damage, and then finally with your circlet, you'll either want to go for defense, crit rate, or crit damage. As for your substats, again, defense percentage and flat defense are king, followed by crit rate and crit damage, and then everything else. As for the talent priorities, much like the first build, you'll want to go for your elemental skill, the solar isotoma first, followed by the tectonic tide, your elemental burst, and then finally your normal attacks. Like I said though, this build kind of pales in comparison to the first build featured in this video, but nonetheless, if you're looking for a different way to play Albedo, this can potentially fill that role. Whilst Albedo's overall damage may be a little bit weaker whilst using this build, he can nonetheless with this build buff up whoever your main DPSs are, so long as they use Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro. Now, if you're going through the game for the first time though, and you want a set for Albedo, I'd recommend going for two pieces of the Defender's Will set, which will give us an increase of 30% to our defense, and two pieces of the Berserker set, which will give us an increase to our crit rate of 12%. Just some nice buffs there. But every character, whether they're four star or five star in Genshin Impact, has various pros and cons. And Albedo is no different. When it comes to Albedo, his biggest pro is his damage output. He's able to deal large amounts of AoE Geo damage, and he doesn't even have to be the active character on the field to do so, making him a great addition to pretty much any team in the game. On top of that, his next pro is that his elemental burst gives everyone in the team an increase to their elemental mastery. And the final pro is that Albedo scales off of defense, which makes building him relatively easy. But there are a few cons. First of all, his solar isotoma platform can unfortunately interrupt certain characters when it comes to using their elemental bursts resulting in you missing, so you have to be wary of if you're stepping on the platform or not. And the other con is unfortunately some bosses can easily destroy the solar isotoma, removing it from the battlefield. However, the skill has a fairly quick cooldown of only 4 seconds, so even if it is destroyed, you should normally be able to get it back out on the field and refreshed. But to be honest, when it comes to Albedo, his pros vastly outweigh his cons, making him a very strong character. But every character in Genshin Impact is made stronger with the team they're in. And when it comes to Albedo, there are very few restrictions. Being a Geo character, he can slot into pretty much any team out there. And when combined with other Geo characters, he is made even stronger. If you're using the second build, the support build that uses the Archaic Petra set, you'll want to put him in a team that focuses on elements. But other than that, there are no restrictions to when it comes to using Albedo. Overall, Albedo is one of the best sub-DPS characters in the game, and one of the strongest characters when it comes to dealing off-field damage as well. Whilst he may not be the most useful as a main DPS character, he shines and excels in other areas thanks to his passive skills, elemental skill, and elemental burst. And if you're looking for a sub-DPS or support character, I'd strongly recommend the Chief Alchemist. So there we have it, that is my character guide and overview to Albedo in Genshin Impact. Now remember there are multiple ways to play and use characters in the game, which is one of the many reasons why I love Genshin Impact. So at the end of the day, use the characters how you want to use them. These builds are just how I personally use the characters, and I hope they help you out in your adventures. So until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you a character guide to Albedo in Genshin Impact. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.